Hey, what's up, Schnell? Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today's video is brought to you by the Patreon account and also Rhoda Quinn for just being awesome. And now, this kind of irked me a little bit on Season of Mist Records part. I had no idea. Season of Mist handled these reissues because Festival of Death is one of my favorite Brutal Death Metal albums of all time. And I had zero idea that this was being reissued at all. 2023 Season of Mist published 2001 by Brodequin. And yeah, I told you I was going to be a nerd. But what is there to say about Brodequin? Like, for real. Now, if you're new to Brodequin, it's one of those band names. I never know if I'm saying it correctly. Is it Brodequin? Brodequin? It's Brodequin, I'm like 98% sure. But the art style, they always go for using images of torture and brutality. It never gets old, and I know I sound like a sicko, but like seriously, it's one of the few death metal bands where every release, I just look at the cover art, and I'm like... Yeah, I bet this is going to roll, and nice readable logo. If I was to flip my door, there's a nice bumper sticker, but since I don't know Season of Mist's rules, I just grabbed the black vinyl because the green was sold out on Hell's Headbangers. But I had no idea Festival of Death was even reissued. So I was kind of like, holy crap. Because it had been requested on the Patreon for like three months. And I was kind of like, well, they're, those are, that's going to be like super expensive no matter what. Because at the time... I had no idea about the reissues, so I was just thinking, like, all right, I had no idea this was the first time this ever got a vinyl release, so that's one thing. First pressing a festival of death on black vinyl, so maybe it had a picture disc back in the day. I honestly don't know. 550 copies worldwide, and it's Season of Mist Underground Activists. And wow, did they pick just a total slam dunk of brutal death metal for this reissue. Like, Season of Mist, like the new Pro Profanatica, Broadequin reissues. Okay, like you get you have my attention a little bit here. But for a label that I know has offices based out of Philadelphia, how did I not know about this? It like actually like kinda got under my like I was like kinda salty. I know that sounds stupid, but I was legit like what? Like, that was there the whole... Like, how long has that been there? And then I, I looked into it, and I was like, ah, oh, man. But when Justin... Hold on, real quick. I don't want to spoil the legit classic. And also, I don't know Season of Mist's YouTube rules. But... When I was reminded about Divine Empire's Redemption, I just was like, all right. 
I want to grab two slabs of brutal death metal from Hell's. And I just started thinking, I was like, all right, like, what's the... And I started looking through some patron messages and stuff. And who was it? Because one wasn't a patron. It was actually just a straight up viewer. But like just the fact that more than a couple people have brought up this band. It's about time we finally go over a full length. And Festival of Death, I mean, as soon as you hear Judas Cradle, it's like you just feel your hair grow and just Rhoda Quinn does not condone violence. They demand violence. But seriously, holy shit. You want to talk about just heavy, brutal, straightforward death metal, it doesn't get much gnarlier than Brodequin. And Festival of Death, it's one of those, like, is it my favorite? It's a little toss-up, but, like, yeah, I, I would probably say Festival of Death, you know, it's just one of those brutal death metal records, along with, like, Tales of Necrophilia by Regurgitation. I would say it's a little slept on, but not really. Like, it's the same when somebody, I forget who mentioned somebody being underrated. And I was like, oh, Demi Lich on Instagram. Uh, somebody was like, uh talking about Demi Lich and I just had to remind them like yo like back when they were like in 2015 to like whenever Extremely Rotten did the Nespeth tape reissue before Svart did the vinyl reissue along with the demo compilation which I think was 2018 I have it right here I'll just pull out the uh, demo compilation because I kind of feel like listening to it. It's on clear, I'm pretty sure 180 gram vinyl. But Dave from Wendigong speaking. Like, I love how Dave got to do the tape version of Nespeth. And he did the artwork for the demo compilation reissue. But I'm just trying to see real fast. Okay, 2018 was when it was first re-released by Extreme Music after being re-released in 1996 by Repulse Records, but originally released in 1993, Necropolis Records. But Re-released 1996 by Repulse. Re-released 19. Uh, Re-released 2009 by Extreme Music, and then this official authorized cassette was released in 2018 by Extremely Rotten Productions. Now I remember seeing them on tour in 2017, and they had they didn't even have CD copies of Nespeth. So, as soon as ERP did the tape reissue, I was all over it, like, and same when Svart did the vinyl reissues of both Nespeth and the demo compilation, because before that, like, I have bootleg, well, just a bootleg of the 1992, the Echo demo, and yes, that is actually... The original artwork and stuff, but definitely paid $15 for somebody to just put the songs on a pro tape. Which, that's fine, but like, come on. Like, and they, they did a good job on the J card, so I, I can't be mad. And just those demo, like, I wish I had the, they made the demo compilation on tape. They should do like... 
what they did with the imprecation demos that make up the compilation. They should do that with Demi-Lich and have all the demos separate leading up to Nespeth. I think that would be amazing. I mean, it would take up a... Uh, because uh, you would have the four instructive tales of decomposition, 1991, somewhere inside the bowels of endlessness, 1992, the echo, 1992, but starting, it would have to start with regurgitation of blood, 1991, which is just uncontrollable regret of the rotting flesh, which I would just throw on to the four instructive tales of decomposition, maybe on like the B side, and do one of those covers like the Party on It Remains, where you have both releases like on either side of the J card. You know what I mean? Like I just think that would be really sick. I mean I know that's asking a lot, but like it's Demi Lich. It's something. It's go. It was. It's gonna sell out. And it's something I personally feel is needed. Cause if you slept on this, I mean, I know you, you could sometimes stumble upon it on like extremely rotten nuclear war now hell's headbangers, but like it's just absolutely essential stuff here. Like, if you're a fan at all of Finnish death metal, like, I, I cannot, like, I, I can't tell you how important this booklet is when it comes to just, like, having the lyrics and seeing, like, Auntie's sense of humor. If you've never seen Demi Lich live, you, you really don't, like, some of this shit is great, like, Winter, 1990 to 1991. The lyrics couldn't be found. Either they were never written down or they are caref carefully hidden. It's a pity, though, as these ones I could decipher clearly and indicate this was a masterpiece comparable to the best work of Edgar Allan Poe. This is for And the Slimy Creatures Reproduce in Your Brains. You found a new species of animal, flying creatures nesting in brains. Your friend has ennobled some of them, but never told what's going on. You are scared. He's playing with death. Your friend's head has blown. The creatures do something nice here, I think. They approach you and your ears. More of them shall be born. Hell yeah. Anti. It's one of those tell them Steve Dave moments, but so good. And like I said, just a great reissue by Svart. But it's not the original. I know. But still, super sick. It's the village. But also, this is on the more obvious, technical, but still brutal side of death metal. Where Brodequin, like I said, there's no like guitar noodling. It's really just some straight up like heavy, gnarly, brutal death metal. There's no, like, hardcore influence. Now, some hardcore bands might have taken from Broda Quinn, but there's no, like, parts that are, like, just, like, straight up, like, you know what I mean? Like, one of those, like, all right, I'm going to spin kick you in the face right now. Like, there's no, like, straight up, like, just devourment, like, breakdown, suffocation break down it's like when they go into that type of territory it's like that's a what the 
that's bro that's a bro to Quinn breakdown. Like there's just something about it. It's like whoa, that was heavy. <laughs> like it's one of those like it's just like that was fucking heavy, and I love it. And every track on here, especially Judas Cradle, Torches of Nero, Lake of the Dead, Blood of the Martyr, Flow of Maggots, Bronze Bowl. So good. Festival of Death, Banger, Through and Through, All Killer, No Filler. And Festival of Death was written and performed by Jamie Bailey on bass and vocals, Mike Bailey on guitar, and Chad Walls on drums. Um, Just like I said, in my opinion, one of the heaviest and gnarliest bands in death metal history. Rotoquin and Festival of Death reissued very nicely, yet kind of, I mean, maybe it wasn't low-key and I just missed it, but this reissue is like legit, it's kind of bare bones and it's exactly what it needs to be. I mean, I didn't expect this to have a giant, you know, booklet with all the history of the band and stuff. I just wanted the tunes. I, I, I just, you know. Now, if this was like 1991, it'd be a different story. I would want all that information and stuff. But all I need here is the brutality. And I'm happy. Because the songs on here are legit. Like, it's just... If you're a fan of the more, like, brutal style of death metal, then you can't go wrong with Festival of Death by Broda Quinn. Like, it's just legit. Like, you, you can't. It just, like, it's one of those records that's, like, to weaker records. And that's why, like, as soon as I grabbed the Divine Empire LP, I was like, all right, because I had already passed this, and it was a little pricey, but I was like, I don't give a shit. Like, it's one of those releases, the viewers want it, I want it, fuck, like, whatever, bite the bullet, but... Having, like, Divine Empire's Redemption to just go along with this. Like, wow. Just nice slab of brutality right here. Like, these are two, quite, like, I mean, 22 years old already. And this is, I think, uh, oh my goodness. 1998. And this still just blows away, like, most modern death metal. And 22 years, 2001. Again, during this time, death metal was a weird, a weird landscape. From, like, 2000 to 2000, like, eight especially. Like, there was some weird, kind of wacky stuff going on. That's when you started having, you know, like the Bree Bree Bree. Like the job for a cowboy stuff started getting more popular around like early 2004, late 2003. And it was just like, dude, just listen to Dechristianize. Like, like, like I remember just being like, yo, Vital Remains just destroys like 98% of this stuff. Like, it's kind of garbage. But, like, at the time, you know, I'm still a big early Mastodon fan. I would just be like, hey, let's listen to Remission. Or, like, let's listen to Griefs Come to Grief. I Hate God, Dope Sick. Like, I don't know. It, during that time period, we were listening to a lot of Cryptopsy, though, back in the Skeleton Fruit Panic days. And, like, early Incantation. Early suffocation. Pretty much your typical bands that are like cool now, 
they weren't that cool back then, like, especially in Mortician. I got a lot of shit for, like, being like, yo, like, during this bass part, like, do that, like, Will Rom, or, like, and, like, I remember people being like, yo, do you guys, like, listen to Mortician? And we were like, oh, yeah. And they were like, man, that shit's, like, so boring. And we were like, but then we're getting invited to play, like, New York Death Metal, like, MYDM, like, the crew. Like, we're playing MYDM events. Like, Will Romers, like, dual, like, the fucking, like, your set was fucking sick. Like, I, I there, there's a picture. I'm wearing a Necrophagus hoodie. Fucking camo shorts. It's so 2006, but, like, sorry to get off topic, but. You know what CD? I distinctly remember Will having a copy of at his distro. Festival of Death. But I knew we needed as much money as possible on the Tolls Home. Because we were, we were playing in Yonkers, New York with Skinless. And we only got paid $75. From our guarantee, which is fine. I, I was like, oh, like, are you sure? Like, and he was like, dude, just take it. And that 70, like, I didn't know we were going to get, like, I didn't care. I was like, dude, we get, we're playing with Skinless? Like, co-headline? Like, really? Like, we're playing before Skinless? Like, fuck. So, like, we had to just kill it that night. Like, I'll, I'll never forget it. And I'll never forget seeing this in Will's distro. And just being like, I, I can't. Because we got to drive home. And we got to get food. But I didn't get that $75 yet. I, I almost, like, but like Will had already packed up like by the end of like Skinless's set. So, it was one of those situations, like, I had the CD in my hand, and I was just like, ah, like, yeah, we need all the money, like, we made tonight, so, you know, can't, it was one of those type of situations, like, but, I should have grabbed it, cause, I, I, it's just, I was happy with listening to, with what we had in the, van at the moment because the cd player was still working at the time and so was the cassette deck so we used to this is how i feel really old but we used to have the thing where you would put a tape into the tape deck in the car and it would have an audio wire and the audio wire would be like connected if I remember you put the tape in and the audio wire would work like where the headphone jack was on an iPod and then you could listen to your iPod through the tape deck or you use see but I don't think my station wagon had a working lighter i'm pretty sure the lighter like shit the bed so we couldn't use it as a power source so we had to use the tape with the wire out of it because back in the day that's how like my friend didn't have a cd player that's how we used to listen to cds he had one of those shock proof cd players like velcroed up on top of the dashboard and it was a monstrosity. And this thing connected into the cassette deck. And I remember one time this it wouldn't read a blank CD. And in Central Jersey, we were on our way to a skate park. And there was one of those circles. And my friend just... I remember we were listening to Bad Luck 13, right? Extravaganza's... Split with All Else Failed, I think, like Live at the Dungeon or something like that. I, I forget. I just know it was like either All Else Failed or Bad Luck 13. It was one or the other. It's pouring rain. God damn it. 
I really wanted to go down the trails today. But, sorry, back to Brodequin. But, let me finish this story real fast. My friend just grabs the CD player like this, and he's like, you motherfucker. And just, just throws it out the window, and it just smashes against this, like, road sign. And I just remember being like, Oh shit, like he's at, it's like we were all were like laughing because it kept skipping. And you know, when you're a teenager, like our friend was a lot, not a lot older than us. He was a senior when we were freshmen. So he was a little more mature. So it's like skipping and we're like laughing our asses off. He's just getting angrier and angrier and angrier. And what does that have to do with Festival of Death? I feel like if we were listening to this, maybe he would have beat the shit out of us. But we were listening to some, like, like I remember distinctly listening to this hardcore band called Step Ahead. I can't find any of this band's material anywhere. Positive they are from South Jersey or Philly. If anybody watching this knows who Step... I'm sure there's tons of hardcore bands named Step Ahead now. But there was something about this band that just was next level awesome. Like, almost like A Voice of Reasons, uh, I think it's New Beginnings. Like, that that record to me for hardcore, same with like when I first heard Reach the Sky... I was like, whoa, like, what's this? Like, this is, you know, a little bit different. Because I was in, I was really into, like, the youth crew stuff. But then I heard Sheer Terror. And I started getting into the more super pissed off, like, you know, just that. And, like, same with, like, when American Nightmare first came out. Like, as soon as that self-titled dropped, and then the, the EP, and then back when background music came out, oh my goodness. Like, it was the same with, like, Converge Jane Doe. It was a game changer. And 2001. So, like, you have Jane Doe on one side, and then you have, you know, the complete opposite here. But they're both brutal records. They're both, depending on who you talk to, bona fide classics. Except for, in my opinion, when it comes to brutal death metal, I really feel like Brodequin is one of the few bands that I can legitimately say is a little underrated. Because I never see, like, I have two of their, I have a long sleeve and this. This is some weird European or Mexican. Look how weird this shirt fits. It's like just some weird, like, I, I don't even know. But, like, I had to cut the sleeves off. Otherwise, it was just unwearable. Like, it, it like, sticks out like a, like a, I don't know, it's weird. It's, like, real baggy up front. It's like they want you to have, like, a beer gut or something. <laughs> I guess in Europe, most people have, like, a beer... I, I don't know. That's all I could think of. But when it comes to death metal, look no further. I don't know how many more copies Hells has of this, but Rhoda Quinn Festival of Death on Season of Mist Underground Activist Series. Grade A death metal. And again, this is... A very limited first pressing of Festival of Death on Black Vinyl, limited to 550 copies worldwide. Don't sleep on this. Same with the Divine Empire. I know for a fact Justin is running low. When he sells out, they're sold out. So I would grab like do I would do exactly the order I did Divine Empire Redemption 
Brodequin Festival of Death if you're looking for some killer death metal right now. But as always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. Sorry this went on so long. Hail. <laughs>